What's up boys and girls, Lambo here and in today's video I will tell you how to beat Hellbat Olens. I will talk about um, all the differences in the different Hellbat builds, how to scout them and how to react basically. And a couple of general tricks that you guys can apply um, in your games. I'm not gonna go over my early game too much because this is just one of the most standard openings that I'm doing. No matter what you're doing you should just go up to let's say seven queens at the very least and make some zerglings for the hellions and that's pretty much other than that you're just making drones i'm not going over their speed so that would kind of be cheating and um yeah so i told Cree to play three different hellbat olens so the hellbat olens that i will cover in this one are from marine first which is uh, one of the strongest hellbat timings that can hit because you have the factory a little bit earlier and that extra marine already so this one hits a little bit earlier than later on one of the more standard ones with Rex first and then a Marauder Hellbat push but I can also talk about Hellbat Battlecruiser and Hellbat Banshee later on. So the first game we're looking at, uh, my opponent already played Marine first and against Gas first and Marine first one of the things that I like to change about my build um, which isn't isn't the biggest of deals is that I make a, a, new, hatch, a, a new queen the moment this spawns. Usually I inject and then make a new hatchery here. Yeah, a new, a new queen, of course. So we already have uh, four queens at this point with three more on the way. So we have seven by the time this Hellbat attack should arrive. Um, now this Hellbat attack arrives very early. He's on my side of the map at like four minutes and ten seconds. The armory is done. Uh, let's talk about the weaknesses of these kind of builds. So weakness number one, a very big one, is that they cannot have a wall in time. So they, you, you usually need five depots. Or uh, what Terrans usually do is three depots and a CC or on that or a four uh, supply depots, and you simply don't have the money for it if you're going for a Hellbat push. So the moment this Hellbat, the 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 medivac moves out and the Hellions move out, you can counterattack with Zerglings if you want to. So all the Zerglings that you made initially for the potential of a Hellion run by, I made 14 this game, uh, you can try to run by into your opponent's natural. Let's talk about uh, what we scouted. So far what we know is my opponent went for Marine first because there was no Reaper. And then on top of that we saw Depots at the front very early on. Uh, now you don't need this Depots in case you go for a 3cc opener simply because you get the extra uh, supply from the command center. So this already means that it's a 2cc build and then I also saw Hellions arriving very early so I knew it was Rex, Gas, then Factory, then Reactor and not Rex, Gas, Reactor, then Factory, something like that. So you know that there is a potential of a Hellbat push but you see I didn't go for a Blind Blind Nest nor did I go for a Spine Crawler. So what do we do the moment we realize it's a Hellbat Olin? We start extra queens. That's number one you, you guys should always do is make sure to inject all your all your hatcheries and move to the front with every single queen you have. If you have an inject queen in your main and inject queen at the natural, inject these hatcheries and move the queens to the front the way I'm doing it here. So we'll, we'll see from my vision real quick when exactly I see what's going on. I see the marine leaving the base, so I kind of already know. Um, one quick little tip is that usually the medivac leaves in the most straight path, so the medivac always would go like something like this. So if you patrol a zergling here, it can also scout it uh, very easily. Either way, what we're doing is we're injecting these bases and then we're going to the front. So for example, this is usually just an inject queen, but we inject with it and go to the front. Now all of the replays that I'm showing you guys today are gonna be on light shade because this is the hardest map to hold it on and it's very short and you usually expand towards the Terran so the distance is simply the shortest. So this is the hardest this timing can hit. So number one of the execution of the defense now is pull all your queens to the front. Number two, with the links that you already have, go in between the Hellions and your opponent's base. So that will one it, very often it just kills the Hellions that are reinforcing. Obviously my opponent is a, um, a good player, so he keeps the extra Hellions at home. But very often in pro games you can see them uh, ready their Hellions after it and then you can catch them with the Zerglings. Or if you want you can also go for a counter attack. Then while you're doing that, the moment you realize it's a habit on you make one more round of Zerglings. After that, I want you guys to join again, because you don't actually need that many Zerglings against the early Hell Battalions. Neither do you need um, Bane Links early on, but I don't mind you guys starting a Bane Nest or something like that, as you scout it. Number four. It, it, this is only really for short maps, but I think it will simplify the defense for you guys. Um, pull your drones 
away from your third towards your natural because you're gonna have some drones here you should only be on one gas no matter what build you're going for at this point unless you're going for an all-in in which case obviously you're gonna defend the helmet all-in with ease and then the next is the next step is have your queens positioned towards your natural so you can kite back towards your natural if your queens are here um, you might be forced back into a corner where the Terran then can just start hitting your queens with the hellbats and the marines and at that point queens become a lot weaker than if you can kite back. The next part of the execution is have your queens in a line. So right now I just attack the hellbats. Focus firing also is very nice because then you out DPS the healing if you have a lot of queens. In this case I have six queens at the front. Um, if the medevac comes too close, feel free to focus fire the medevac, but the queens mostly should just aim move. And now what you do if the hellbells start attacking the queens is you can engage with the zerglings from behind. Very important, the zerglings should always come from behind and they engage once the hellbells shoot the queens. And what that does is that these zerglings survive a lot longer than they should and very often they kill the marines. But on the second thing that that does is that the Terran player needs to kite towards the zergling, so he needs to move command to the right and then a move to retarget their the hellbats towards the zergling so you can attack then move back attack move back while the queens are consistently attacking the hellbat attack so you can see that happening here and now once once i knew i held it i didn't mind losing one extra queen instead of just a moving this i tried to even get the medevac um, which we got and that's game over so so these are the main steps in defending early hellbat audience I'm just gonna show and recap a little bit in the next game, so I'll see you there. Okay, so here we are in the second game. This one will be from a barracks first, uh, less committed Talbot Olin. The idea is very similar. That's why I just wanted to show this as well, just to re-emphasize on all the steps that you have to take once you get Talbot Olin. Um, one of the things that I'm not gonna do is that I'm not gonna make this extra queen super early, but you still should end up with a similar amount of uh, queens overall. So we put the creep tumor down. The, oh, I'm not going to talk about the er early game. I will make early game guides at some point. Even though TVZ early game is very, very simple. All you need to do is make a set amount of links, a set amount of queens, and then all you do is drones no matter what. And uh, yeah. Again, we, we knew it was we knew it was a Reaper opener. Um, I saw three marines here, which should never be the case. The marines should always be in the main base. So that's a little bit of a mistake by my opponent. But I'm, I didn't blind counter it just from that. And here he comes. Our links are again in between his units and this. Um, a very good move, as I said before, is to just counter attack. But since I didn't want to blind counter it, I didn't want to have the zerglings on the map, so I did it now while micro it here. And here again, you can see me positioning my queens here rather than having them here. And they're lined up so that if you have the space to line up your queens, do it because then it makes it a lot easier to get a maximum amount of attacks in against the Terran army, because even though he messed up a little bit here, because he's trying to micro at home against the Zerglings. Um, why this is going on? The queens that are attacked, you can move them back or transfuse, but preferably move them back. It's also not the best to double transfuse, so always make sure in these scenarios to just use a single transfuse while pulling the queen back. Because the... Um, extra healing from the transfuse the transfuse does some burst healing and then it heals a little bit longer afterwards that doesn't stack i'm pretty sure so just use one transfuse at a time and pull back the queens that are under attack and then you should be fine with the extra round of zerglings and after this one extra round of zerglings just make drones you are gonna hold it with that amount of zerglings you're not gonna hold it with like 20 extra links it's much much better to make drones afterwards so let's say again this game i think i had like 14 zerglings and then the attack arrives, I pull all my queens to the front while injecting and start extra queens with the money that I have. And after that I make one extra round of zerglings, go counter attack with the zerglings I already have, pull the queens towards the natural, I pulled all drones from the third to the natural, again we see 22 out of 16, similar to the game before. Um, just so you don't have to worry about them here and you don't feel the need to defend. You can also have them here and then pull them away for a second, very often that will um, get you into a similar scenario but especially if your counter attack doesn't get in this build specifically is not the most committed one so i prefer just pulling the back into the natural but that really is up to you but against the early hellbed if you do this and you micro properly you should be fine without a bailing nest or a spine crawler so let's go and head into one of the more later hellbed timings 
So now we're in the third game in which my opponent went for a Marauder Hellbatalin, which is one of the main strategies that you try to blind counter people with that always skip the Bane Nest or that always go double Evo before uh, Lair, um, something like that. Usually if you go for Lair, you have a Bane Nest that should be early enough. But against people that go double Evolution Chamber, they sometimes skip the Bane Nest, so it's um, mixed in every now and again from Terran players. I will also talk about some other Hellbatalins afterwards. But let's again speed through the early game. I played the same opener every game. I never even suicided an Overlord to get the 100% scout. I'm just playing my normal opener. That's the entire point. You don't need to blind counter Hellbed Olins. I just want you guys to see how effective just knowing the correct response after you recognize uh, the fact that it is a Hellbed Olin can be. So, yeah, we're spraying some creep. This is pretty much the most standard opener these days, what I'm doing. So this is already a little bit suspicious. Just to tell you about the scouting information that I have, he has three depots at this point and no CC yet. Uh, usually, let's say he didn't make these Marauders and he didn't make this Armory, he would have the 400 minerals already to make an extra command center around this time, right? If you go um, for a Italian Viking Liberator, which is a relatively standard build, usually they would have a CC. There is So from this, from this straight up, I think for you it could only be three different builds on the ladder. Uh, number one is this one. Number two would be um, a Hellbath Battlecruiser attack. So they go Viking and then Battlecruiser, or they can, could just go Battlecruiser Hellion, maybe without an armory. Either way, that's, I think, another option that you guys might need to worry about at that point. And another very common one is they go after the Viking. They also go Medivac, but no Marauders, and then they drop four Hellions, morph them into Hellbats. And then they run by with the four or six aliens that they have left over into your third base. Also very, very common build. So those are the main ones that I would look out for right now because there is no CC yet. So that's mostly about the CC timing on lower league. That might not be as, as a, a thing as nice to read into. So, the, But the moment you see a Viking in general from a two CC opener, you just throw down a Bailing Nest. Just trust me on this. Just throw down a Bailing Nest. This is a safe timing anyways. It doesn't hurt you. It doesn't hurt your economy whatsoever. We're still just making drones on a 14 links as I did every single game so far. Until we actually see it coming, we do not need to deviate from our normal opener. And now I see the Hydeans grouping up. I also have three spores, just in case it could be a Battlecruiser or a Liberator second. So I, I didn't blind counter at all. Now that I see the Medivac show up at the front with the Hellions, I'm morphing Banelings. And this is the main point. M put all your gases with the Zerglings that you have already into Banelings and make one extra round of Zerglings. The moment this happens, you can see me immediately also firing up the Zerglings and we're just standing our ground with the Queen against this. Focus fire the Medivac if it comes to fire forward. We use some Transfuses. You can, you can lose a bunch of Queens against this. This is a relatively committed build. And then the moment you have the Banelings, it's fine. Now, something that would be better is if you already had the Banelings morph. So if I scouted the Medivac here, I would already have the Banelings morph. I wouldn't lose any Queens here because the Banelings force my opponent to split up his units. And if they're split up, they can't properly kill Queens with Transfuses. That's just not something that the Terran units can do. And you can see we're already saturated on three mineral lines. So all you need to do against these delayed Hylbert builds is have make some Banelings and put all the Queens to the front, preferably in a line and then kite back where, whichever Queens are under attack. In this case, against the delayed ones, you can also hold your third base, especially if you have Banelings already. If your Banelings was too late for some reason, do something similar to the game before and just kite back with the drones. And your Queens need to stand here, but you need to kite in and out a little bit. It might be hard because the Marauders have concussive shells, so you might lose some Queens, but you do need to buy some time for Banelings in that scenario. Okay, so those are three of the most commonly played Hellbat Olins. Now let's, let me talk about what would have happened if he went for the Hellbat drop and Hellion run by. Against that, what you want to have is the Queen that's injecting from the natural. Uh, what happens if the, the Viking will go here very often to make space for the Medivac, so it's super obvious to me. Then I make one extra Queen and I pull the Queen from the natural to the main and I patrol some Zerglings here and make one extra run of Zerglings. That's all you need, two Queens, a couple of Zerglings here. If you want, you can morph some Banes. You just need to be aware of the build. If you're not ready for the build, that, that would be the perfect uh, reaction. In that case, you still have some Zerglings at, at the front and some Queens at the front to defend anything that's coming from the front. Usually it's a Hellion run by, as I said before. Um, now let's just 
for a second, think about what happens if you forget that bird exists, the Viking clears this, and then the medivac comes in here, you don't have vision. Make sure to not panic and move all your links into your main against that. It's very important, I've done this multiple times, I'm speaking from experience. Just move your drones away, and move most of your queens towards the main, to eventually make sure you clear up the Hellbit attack. Um, it would help to have a creep tumor here, I forgot it this game, but usually there should be a creep tumor here at some point. Either way, just move most of your queens to the main, leave some queens at the front. You, I usually play with seven or eight queens at the very least, so I'm talking about five out of the seven or eight queens come to the main base and they will defend it for sure and just make sure you don't lose the drones because it's relatively committed, you will lose a lot of mining time and that's fine, but make sure you leave most of the zerglings at the front and more of some extra bailings for the zerglings, maybe make one extra round of links once you recognize it's any of these committed builds, but against none of these builds you need to make too many extra links, like just one extra round of links is more than enough, usually bailings and queens are what clears it up. Now the second thing I wanted to talk about is what happens if it's a banshee opener. Against the Banshee opener, if you don't go for an early lair, which I usually recommend, but if you don't scout, for example, you don't see any anything, um, you, you would need a Spore Crawler in between your bases, and then you obviously also just hold it with Queens and Bane Links. This one is straight up, you can also just hold it with Queens and Links, but it's important that you have detection of some sort in between your bases, otherwise the Banshees will get a lot of DPS in. And now again, what happens if you forget that build exists and you don't have detection, you didn't go for a lair, nor do you have an extra Spore in between your bases, uh, what you should do in this scenario, and I'm going to show this to you right now. Yeah, once the spore is finished, usually obviously your spore should be earlier against Banshees. I, I hope that's obvious. You want to start them around maybe 4.30. If you, if you think it might be a Banshee opener. Okay, so let's just completely ignore the fact that there's a habit attack happening right now, and I'm going to start the game. So you bring all your queens to the front, and immediately what you do is you pull this here, pull this here, and pull this here. And then, for a while, your queen should be able to fight without detection, and then when the detection arrives, you could even do it like this. To make sure you cover literally everything in between your bases, that's the most important part. And, oh, you remake the one in the main base, obviously. I forgot about that. So you move the one from the main to the natural, the natural in between. The third should stay where it is, and then you make an extra spore. And then you should have detection everywhere in case you forgot. Against the uh, Hellbat BC, all you also need is queen, queens and banelings, and you should be fine. Um, in any case, uh, one spore in between your bases would also help there. Just make sure that you don't just focus fire the BC while all your queens are dying, so make sure to always still kite. The BC is not really the thing that does damage in these attacks, it's mostly the Hellbats, so make sure to yeah, get decent trades. And the same applies for every Hellbat attack, once the Hellbats start engaging the queens, you can try, if you don't have Bane links especially, you can try coming from behind and attacking the Hellbats for a second. Then the Hellbats need to either stutter step back, and you can try to back off yourself, or your links fry up when the Hellions stutter step back. Both are fine, because then the Queens get a lot of extra hits in, which is very important. And um, yeah, I, I think that sums up most of the Hellbat builds. If you guys can think of any other Hellbat build that uh, brings you trouble, for example, Blue Flame Hellion, that's usually they just keep them in Hellion mode to attack, because Blue Flame doesn't really help the Hellbats. In killing the queens, so I'm not sure that that's an actual build. But um, yeah, if you guys can think of any highway all-ins that I've missed, like the late, for example, late uh, 3 cc 2 on one hellbat attacks, all you need against that is always bane links. Like all, all you need is a well-timed bane link nest against 2 one one with hellbats. Also, all you need is a bane link nest. But I've talked about it in my 2 one one response video. Uh, so in general, there are no tricks for that. All you need, basically need is a normal mod of units plus bane links. So yeah, I think that about covers it. Thank you guys for watching and see you guys in the next video. Bye bye.